There's no need to collect the 80 plus game systems and tens of thousands of games that RetroArch can play. I'm about to teach you how to use RetroArch on your Windows based PC to play four different decades worth of video games. Fire up your internet connected Windows PC because we're starting now. Be sure to check the video description for the latest show notes and updates. You'll also find links to products and websites featured in the video. I'm a true believer that when something's made easy, it's much more likely to get done. And RetroArch for Windows is easier than ever to get up and running. From the downloads page linked in the description below, scroll down until you see the Windows version of RetroArch. Most people are now running the 64-bit version of Windows, and you'll just need to download the installer for 64-bit Windows here. Grab the 32-bit version if you have the 32-bit version of Windows. Click to download the installer. From your Windows Downloads folder, navigate to the RetroArch EXE file and double-click it. At the UAC prompt, navigate to Yes and click on Yes to continue. Let's slow our roll through the install process for just a moment, because you might miss something that you need and end up getting something you might not want. Navigate to the Next button in the bottom right corner and click to continue. From here, read the license agreement if you so choose and click I agree to continue. You'll need to select the path where you want RetroArch installed. It defaults to the local root of the C drive, which is just fine for me. Click Next to continue when you've chosen your path. Pay close attention here. If you don't already have DirectX installed on your machine, click this checkbox. You will need to have DirectX installed for RetroArch to work. Once you've decided whether or not to install DirectX, come down to Next and click it to continue. Now you can select if you want a start menu listing for RetroArch and or a shortcut on your desktop. Once you have these choices made, click Install to install RetroArch. If you elected to install DirectX 9.0, you'll see a new pop-up window. From here, select I accept from the list of choices and click Next to continue. Okay, slow your roll here again for just a moment. You have to make a decision about whether or not you want the Bing bar installed in your web browser. If you do, you can leave this checked. If you don't, make sure you uncheck this before proceeding and then click Next. A quick note here that DirectX may ask to download some additional DirectX related content. If you get that prompt, definitely select Yes. Once the installation process is done, you can click Finish to close out the installer. You'll be returned to the RetroArch main installation window and notified that everything's complete. Click the Finish button to close it out. You're not going to need that executable installer anymore. Just right click on it and delete it from your downloads folder. Let's launch RetroArch for the first time so we can get some necessary updates installed. Close out File Explorer and launch RetroArch either from the Quick Start icon on your desktop or from your Start menu in Windows. I'm running Windows in 4K resolution, which is probably why it came up in this really small window. You can solve this in the short term by just clicking the Maximize button in the top right corner. We'll set up RetroArch for full screen in just a moment. Before you start playing your games in RetroArch, you'll need to do some key updates. From the main menu, navigate down to Online Updater and click on it. This version of RetroArch does not ship with the cores, and you'll need to download cores in order for your games to work. We'll address those on a system-by-system -system basis in just a moment. There aren't any playlists set up yet, so you don't need to update playlist thumbnails. The content downloader is optional. It contains Homebrew and other third-party applications. There's also no need yet to update core info files as we don't even have any cores installed yet. We'll get to that in a moment. And what you absolutely must run, and this one really isn't optional, is the Update Assets section. Click this link and let it do both the download and the extraction of the necessary files. It will restart RetroArch and you'll be back at the same small window. Again, just hit the Maximize button. We'll fix full screen here coming up shortly. Now let's see, where were we? Oh yeah, Update Controller Profiles. Click that to download and extract new controller profiles. We're going to connect a USB wired controller in just a moment. Optionally, you can scroll down to Update Cheats and click to download. Hey, no judgments here. Navigate down to Update Databases and click. Just be aware this one takes around a minute in real time. Scroll down to Update Overlays and click on it. Once that's complete, scroll down to Update GLSL Shaders and click on this one. This is going to help improve the graphics performance in RetroArch. And last, turn on the on-demand thumbnail updater. This will automatically download box art for your games. To go back in the menu, click the RetroArch icon that looks like a Space Invader in the top left corner. In order to play games, you're going to need ROMs, and you optionally will need system BIOS files for certain consoles. Let's talk about what to do with those. Close out RetroArch and go to File Explorer. Navigate to the location where you have your BIOS system files and your ROMs. In this case, I just keep them in the music folder because I don't keep any music on this machine anyway. 
What you're looking at here, inside the music folder, I have a system folder that has the system BIOS files. Make note that the word system is in lower case. And I also have a series of test ROMs. Copy your system folder with the system BIOS files. In this case, I just pressed Control C on the keyboard. Navigate to the path where you have your RetroArch folder. In this case, it's on drive C and it's in a folder called RetroArch Win64. Double click into your RetroArch folder. This is where you want to paste the system folder. If you're going to right click inside the RetroArch folder and paste it, make sure you don't have any subfolders highlighted. Or you can just press the Ctrl V key on the keyboard. You can use ROM files from folders anywhere on your storage devices that you like. But since RetroArch on other platforms uses them inside the downloads folder, let's do that for the sake of consistency. I'm going to grab the three folders you see here, NES, SNES, and Genesis. There's one ROM in each of these to test with. Copy your folders that have your ROM files. Navigate back to your RetroArch folder. In this case, remember, it's on the C drive on the root under RetroArch Win64. Inside this folder, navigate to the downloads folder. Inside this folder is where you want to paste your ROM folders. Just right click and paste them here. Once you have your ROMs copied over, close out any open instances of File Explorer. You'll need to reopen RetroArch at this point. Navigate back to the quick launch icon or the start menu and launch RetroArch again. This will be the last time you have to maximize it to get it to look full screen. Navigate to the settings section on the left navigation. In the right pane, Scroll down to Video and select it. From the list of menu choices, navigate to the selection that says Full Screen Mode and then click on it. You see this listing here that says Start in Full Screen Mode? Click it to turn it on. RetroArch will automatically restart and now you'll be in Full Screen Mode for the duration of your session, not only in the menus but in all of the games. Go to the top left corner and click the Space Invader button to go back to the main menu. Remember how I mentioned earlier RetroArch does not come with cores? Click on Load Core, then select Download a Core. This is going to let you choose the most up-to-date cores for RetroArch. Cores are part of the emulator and you have to select them on a system-by-system -system basis. For this demonstration, I'm going to use Super Nintendo. I'm going to grab one of my favorite cores for Super Nintendo, shown here, called BSNES. The core will be downloaded with the most up-to-date version and put in the right folder. To navigate back to the main menu, click the Space Invader icon. Your ROMs are in the right location, but we need to import them into the RetroArch interface. Come down to Import Content and click on it. From the list of menu choices, navigate to Scan Directory and click on it. You'll be asked to provide the path to where your ROMs are located. In this case, it's going to be on Drive C. Then navigate to the RetroArch Win64 folder. Navigate to the Downloads folder. And this is the folder that you'll want to select. Click on Scan This Directory to start the ROM scanning process. The amount of time this takes varies by the amount of ROMs that you have to scan. When the scan is complete, navigate up to the Space Invader icon and click it until you get back to the main menu. Now when you look in the navigation pane on the left, at the bottom, you'll see a listing for Super Nintendo or whichever system that you have imported the content for. This is a Super Nintendo playlist and all of the SNES ROMs will be located here and available for immediate play. And check this out, because we turned on the online thumbnail updater, the box art is automatically downloaded and will be there for your games. RetroArch has become much more intuitive about dealing with controllers. For example, I'm going to plug in an Xbox 360 wired USB controller. Windows is going to pick it up right away. And as you can see here in the bottom left, this pop-up message says that because the controller is not already configured, it'll use a fallback set of settings. What this means for you is most contemporary controllers should work just fine when connected by USB or paired by Bluetooth, but you can always customize the controls to your liking. To launch the game with the controller now connected, just press the forward button, in this case the A button. Select run with the forward button, then from the list of core choices, select the core that you downloaded, in this case BSNES. You'll get a pop-up notification on the bottom left that your core has been set. Select Run with your Forward button. This will give you the foundation to set up the content you want for your PC in RetroArch. But check this out, there's a lot more great emulation featured in this video shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description below. See you over there!